here. I need some feedback because uh, I'm not sure if we're live or not. Can anyone hear me? No idea if I'm live or not. I need some feedback. Somebody say you can hear me loud and clear. No idea if I'm live or not. I need some feedback. Somebody say you can hear me loud and clear. No idea if I'm live or not. I need some feedback. Oh, oh, we are having uh, feedback from the laptop. Audio is good. Hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you for joining me. Um, and thank you for, if you are um, in the UK, thank you for choosing me over Oprah. <laughs> so let's have some questions. You are good. Yes, there we go. I've got some feedback. So... First question, uh, let's get all the hellos out of the way. Can hear you, thank you, that's perfect. Sorry if I have to keep looking down because I'm looking at my, um, my laptop screen and, and this is currently, this is all the questions coming up on my screen. So uh, better plug that back in so it doesn't run out of battery. So let's have a look, see if we can see any uh, faces that I know. Uh, Jill Scott, hello Jill Scott, you're there. Uh, Marie Wick, hello Marie, how are you? Um, who else is here? Let's have a look. We will need your perspective on the, oh, we will need your perspective on the interview. Oh, uh, I don't have a perspective on the interview. Um, I like the Queen. I like to stay um, impartial and keep my opinions to myself. I think it's uh, the um, way not to offend, because whatever you say, you're gonna offend somebody. So just, um, I like to keep my opinions to myself. So um, just wanna say good luck to them, the Royal Family and uh, William, uh, no, not William Kate, is it Harry and Meghan, that's it. Oh, hello, Will, Will Meany, thank you very much. Hello, Detective Petherick. Ah, hello. Uh, Detective Petherick hasn't been out in a long time, so uh, maybe you'll see him again one day. Okay, I need to somehow, just bear with me, I need to somehow slow this chat down because it's going past so fast. Um, no idea how to do that. So here we go, right. Let's have a look. How was my holiday in Spain? I wasn't there for very long. Um, I just went to um, uh, see some friends, uh, had a fantastic time, and I'm actually going back in a week's time. Um, and so you will be um, getting a, a tour of Madrid, hopefully, um, because there's a lot of amazing museums with amazing artwork there and some amazing people. So, um, yeah, you're going to be seeing that very soon. Let's have a look. Hello, Michael from North Carolina. Hello. Um, oh, I can't slow this down. This is the problem you see with these live chats. They shoot past so fast, you can't even read the questions. Okay, let's have a look. Um, Jill Scott, you ah, Jill Scott, you seem to be popular among these Chateau owners. Jill Scott is a fantastic lady, um, and she's very involved with all things Chateau, um, and it's much appreciated because she is known as the, uh, well, not this Chateau, but she's known as the Lalonde Wikipedia, and um, if you need a question, ask Jill Scott because you'll know the answer. Okay, hi, please can you go vegan and save the lives of cows at the farm? Um, I, I've all thought about going vegan at different points in my life, but I'm right now, I'm, uh, I'm, um, no, I'm not gonna do that just yet, but maybe, I'll give it a try, give anything a try. Okay, so, can't see your blue eyes, Michael. Okay, so I'm gonna try and look at this screen instead. So let's try and slow the chat down. Um, top chat, none. Okay, let's have a look. Um, no, no idea how to do this. Um, hello, Michael, best wishes from Canada. What's next for the cottage? Okay, that's a good question. Um, what's next for the cottage? Okay, there's some work been going on in that um, recently. Uh, not a lot, um, but the um, walls are currently being plastered and I bought the paint today. So I'm gonna be painting the, um, the kitchen very, very soon, probably this week. And um, as far as the upstairs of the cottage is going, nothing's happened up there. Um, it needs um, boarding out and insulating um, before anything can happen. But actually before that happens, there's a, a more urgent job. And that is the small um, attached building on the side of the cottage. It needs a new roof because uh, the one that's there has got quite a few holes in it. So we're gonna be doing that um, next because I can't put the bathroom in and the, um, what's the word? I've forgotten the word. The um, pantry, I can't put the um, bathroom in the pantry in because obviously the roof's leaking, so can't do that just yet. Um, we're just waiting for some slightly better weather. Although it's been really sunny here, it's actually quite cold at the minute. 
So we need to strip the roof off, put a new roof on that, um, which is going to be expensive. Um, um, but luckily we can do that ourselves. So actually it's not gonna be that expensive. It's just the price of the tiles and the materials really. But um, uh, yeah, we've got to do that. So um, the kitchen's basically finished. Um, it's just cosmetic work now. It's um, uh, varnishing the cupboards above the sink and finishing off the plaster, painting the walls, scrubbing the floor and varnishing that so that it's um, sealed. So um, uh, yeah, so not a lot to do. Um, let's have a look. Plaster is such a strange word. It can mean to cover it, it can mean to get quite dry. Ah, yes, getting plastered or plastering the walls, yes. Um, same word, very different meaning. Um, but, um, right, so, Michael, you seem to be losing loads of weight. Don't overdo it. You're already a, a sexy piece. Who's that from? That's from Habitual Angel. Uh, what habit? I'm not sure what that says, but uh, yeah, I have been working out recently, so um, I'm slowly losing weight. Um, I did um, gain a bit um, after I started YouTube uh, because of the lockdown, but um, it's going to be gone, hopefully, um, by the summer. So getting back in shape, that's good. Um, good thing, Michael, only uh, has a, f a few videos. I was able to watch all of them. That's great. Um, I actually don't have that many videos. In the last year, I've probably done about 54 four videos so not actually that many it's probably about one a week to be honest um but um yeah i'd like to make more videos but to be honest it's um it's been a bit of a steep learning curve to be honest because it's only been in on the 20th of march it's going to be uh one year since i started youtube um so it all happened really fast and i'm still trying to um kind of catch up and get used to the idea that this is what i do now full time so um, do you plan on seeing Stephanie soon? I would love to see Stephanie soon, but I've been really busy um, and she's been really busy. So hopefully when the weather's a bit better um, and, you know, when I can go down to La Londe, we can sit outside and eat and stuff. That'd be really nice. Um, um, yeah, I'll definitely be going there soon, but I'm not sure when. Obviously, at the minute, um, uh, Stephanie's uh, been quite strict. Um, with um, having guests at the Chateau. So anyone who goes to the Chateau has to have a COVID test. And um, she's very adamant about that um, because she doesn't want uh, people coming to the Chateau um, and bringing COVID to the area because then she'd feel responsible. So um, it's really, really responsible of her. So um, obviously it's not easy to just turn up, um, but I will um, get a um, COVID test and go there. Um, who says, tell us about Gustavo, please. Um, uh, I will tell you a bit more about him uh, another time, um, but um, yeah. So, um, did you get your boiler yet? Um, no, the boiler for the um, Arga has not arrived. Um, it got lost on a pallet and nobody knows where it is. I've tried to contact the courier um, and they um, are, have been very vague. They, um, they are now telling me that I need to present a photo of the palette, which obviously I didn't send it, so I don't have a photo of it. So they're being a bit difficult. Um, how is Elias? Uh, Elias is great. He's, I think he's downstairs in the basement doing some laundry at the minute. Um, he might pop in and say hello at some point. Um, I'm really, really sorry if I'm not answering your questions because if you could see my screen right now, they are just flying past and I really don't know how to slow them down. So, um, hi, Michael. Uh, yeah, see, no way I can see these, they're too fast. Um, and if anyone has, um, let's have a look. I see, manage, give me a second. I'm just gonna do some technical stuff and see if I can slow this chat down. There must be a way to do it. Here we go, let's close this chat here. So if you just bear with me, uh, here we go. Toggle timestamps, no. Pop out chat, no. Participants. Manage moderators, we don't have any moderators. Um, so, no, how do I do this? No idea, let's have a look. Settings, playback speed, normal. Nope, don't know how to do it. Top chat, um, live chat, all messages are visible. Top chat, we'll try that. There we go. That seems to have slowed it down a little bit. Okay, so let's do a pop out chat so I can actually see what you're saying. Um, and enlarge that so I can't see my face. There we go. Um, it is, it's not possible to slow the chat down as it's a live input. Ah, unfortunately, um, 
yeah, we can't slow it down. So I'm really, really sorry if I can't see your messages. Let's just... So apparently, oh no, the connection's there. Okay, what is next for the cottage? Um, I just spoke about that. So um, yeah, the kitchen, just need to finish the kitchen before I move on to the um, bathroom. And then we're once that's finished, once it's had a new roof put on it uh, and the bathroom's done, they're gonna move on to upstairs. So it's all gonna be happening. Obviously I've slowed down work because um, uh, I'm trying to um, put a bit of money aside to, to continue the works because it actually is really expensive because um, uh, obviously I've got to pay um, not only just materials, um, I've got to pay, um, you know, labor and things like that if I have Sean in and things like that. So it can be quite expensive. So I've um, just had a little break, trying to recuperate some funds and then we'll go back full steam ahead and finish it by the summer. So. It's gonna get done um, and it'll be worth the wait. Um, be nice to actually move in there. Um, oh, I can hear you, here we go. What's going on with the cottage? How is Bertie? Bertie's fine, he's getting huge. Um, well, actually, he's not getting that big. He's um, a chihuahua, so he's gotta stay quite small, um, but he's doing really fine and he's now at the point where he can run around outside with the other dogs and um, yeah, he seems really happy here. Question, what type of content will you be making in the future for the channel? And how, um, how are the fur babies? The dogs are all great, all um, six of them we have here. Um, and what's, um, what type of content um, will I be? Actually, I've just found out how to slow the chat down and that is by scrolling back up. So it actually stops the chat from moving. So hopefully I'll be able to read some questions before they shoot past. Um, okay, what kind of content will you be making in the future? Well. Um, I were, well, I'm going to continue, I can't speak. I'm going to continue to making content at the Chateau for now. Um, I would love to, when things are opened up again, I would love to do some travel vlogs, go and see some amazing places around the world, places that I want to see and places that I think people would also like to see. So go and do some traveling, lots of historic stuff. Um, and yeah, um, It'd be nice to eventually um, find, uh, obviously I'm doing the gardener's cottage up at the moment and I'd like to live in that for a while, but um, it'd be really nice in the future to actually find a project of my own and um, maybe buy a house or build a house even from scratch. That'd be amazing um, and create lots of YouTube content about that. And it's just endless content. I mean, this place is gonna take years and years to finish, so there's always gonna be something to film. So. Uh, the YouTube channel will continue. We don't know in what capacity, but it will continue. Um, it may not be doing it ourselves. It might be doing it myself, um, a new a new channel, but we'll see. Um, so let's have a look. Um, have you done any updates in the greenhouse? Um, not since the, whatever you've seen is where we are up to so far. Um, I'm gonna be planting all the seeds um, in the greenhouse tomorrow. So that's going to be filmed and that'll be out in the next video whenever that comes out. Um, and um, how's the Chateau's basement kitchen coming along? Um, well, at the moment, the carpenter is making brand new windows for it because at the minute there aren't any windows. Um, so all of the um, rain and wind just blows through into the basement um, and up through the stairwells and into the Chateau. So um, at the minute, uh, windows are being made. Um, and then where the weather's a bit better, when a bit warmer um, and probably less chance of rain. We're gonna actually cover the terrace completely um, and we're going to try and seal it, make it watertight so that no rain actually gets into the building anymore. So once that's done, then we can just kind of strip it out and we can, um, um, you know, uh, sandblast all of the um, ironwork back and clean it all up and make it, make it nice, put a kitchen in, um, put some heating in there, that'd be great. But yeah, first thing, wait till the windows are finished and then we're gonna try and seal it off before we put the windows in. So that will be happening this year, but we don't know when. So, um, do you have running water in the cottage? Um, and please give our best wishes to Billy, Ryan, Elias and the whole clan. Um, everyone uh, is um, great. I'll give you the, I'll definitely give them um, your wishes. Um, and do you have running water in the cottage? Yes, I do. Actually, it was connected up last week by a plumber. Um, and water is now coming out, only cold water, but we have cold water coming out of the tap in the kitchen sink. Um, but uh, I need a new pipe because the pipe that goes from the mains to the tap, it's like a flexible 
um, metal braided pipe uh, is too thin. So um, the water doesn't come out with much pressure. It's, um, it's a bit slow. So I just need to get a new length of pipe for that. And then, um, yeah, that'd be great. But I have been not having to go to the tap outside anymore to fill up water to boil a kettle, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, any chance we will get to see a Beatrix Potter trip um, too? I would love to go back to the Lake Districts, um, probably not this year. Um, and I'd love to actually film in the um, uh, Beatrix Potter's cottage. Um, but I did contact the National Trust actually last year um, to ask them if I could film in there, um, even though it was closed. Um, and they said that I could film in there, but I needed, uh, I think it was five million pounds worth of um, public liability insurance. Um, and I needed to pay it was it was it was in the thousands to actually um, as a donation to the National Trust to be able to film in there, um, so that really wasn't an option um, just for a, a vlog um, because that wouldn't even cover the costs. Um, you know, like the revenue from the video would net like nowhere near ever cover that cost. So um, unfortunately, I couldn't film in there. Um, but um, I think that was. Um, I think they probably thought I was coming with like a film crew and everything, but obviously I wasn't. Um, so I might be able to film in there, um, but it won't be like an exclusive tour. It, it will just be like as a tourist going and having a look around. But I'd love to go back um, at some point, but not right now. Um, so let's have a look. Um, some more questions. Hello from California. Hello. It's amazing. There's so many people around the world um, watching. Um, and actually this live video is a lot later than I would normally do a live video. Um, but I was, um, a lot of people have said to me in the past that I've done these live videos a lot earlier, which is a time suitable for me or somebody in the UK or somebody in Europe. But then a lot of people in the United States have said to me, oh, it was too early, I couldn't watch it live. So I thought I'll do this one a bit later, um, just for a change and, um, you know, give, um, everyone who watches the channel, like, you know, at least a chance to see one of these live. So let's have a look. Um, I saw something about Joanna Lumley. Uh, love Joanna Lumley. Where was, what was that question? Joanna Lumley has just finished filming Inside Hilltop Cottage only very recently. Yes, she's very lucky. And obviously uh, it's for television. They would have had public liability insurance uh, in the millions. Um, and to be honest, her tour would have been much better than mine because she's just fantastic. So um, actually, I need to watch that. Um, I'll, I'll have a look out for that, see if I can find it. Um, is there an issue with you being able to live in France permanently? No, there's no issue. I just need to apply uh, for French residency. Um, uh, but there, I don't have to do it right now. Um, I think the deadline is the end of this year, I think. Um, but I have lived in France for, I think, the it's five years. If you've lived in France for five years, there's no problem. Um, but um, yeah, I can apply for French residency. That's no problem. So, um, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to read some of these questions. Um, Bertie, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's have a little read through. How's the artwork doing? Um, artwork is, I haven't really done any artwork. I've been too busy but I'm going to be going to um, Madrid for two weeks um, and uh, I'm gonna be visiting loads and loads of museums, art galleries and things like that. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna take all of my art materials with me um, and I'm going to use that time, um, my free time there, to sit and do some artwork because sometimes um, when you, uh, when I'm here, like there's, there's so much stuff going on and I, there's so many distractions that sometimes you need to kind of step away from your situation and um, kind of isolate yourself a bit um, to give yourself time to think and time to relax and be creative. Because at the moment, it, it's just really difficult for me to just to, to sit down and, and do some artwork when I've got so much to think about. like. When's the next video coming out? What are we going to film? I need to edit it. I need to um, I need to promote it. I need to reply to everyone's comments or at least try or at least, I mean, I don't get a chance to reply to many comments, but I do read most of them. Um, and um, then you've got the Patreon, um, uh, which is like 
there's so many so many messages on there that I obviously have to go through them every now and again and, and like when I have time and reply to those. So it'd be nice to just kind of like step away from everything for a little while, a couple of weeks, um, get my pens and pencils out, my paints and, and be creative for once and then come back and then continue. So um, yes, yeah, so artwork will be happening soon. Um, let's have a look. I agree with you in regards to creativity. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to to, to step away and have time to think. Um, let's have a look. Um, uh, take all the time you need. When did you start learning about Arga cookers? Um, well, that's that goes back about six years, um, and. I was living, uh, well actually, my um, my grandparents um, used to have a Rayburn, which is made by Arga, but it's it looks slightly different. And it was a solid fuel one, and it used to heat their house in France. And I used to love it. And then we, uh, in England, when I lived in England, when I was a teenager, we moved into a, a cottage on a farm, and that had an old Rayburn in it as well that used to run on solid fuel. And I just remember it being so lovely and warm uh, and you could cook on it and it heated the kitchen. Um, and then obviously moved away from home and completely forgot about the whole thing. And then I was living in a, a rented house in Manchester and I, I needed a cooker because the cooker in the house had broken. The landlord was uh, not the best. Um, so it was up to me to find a new cooker. So I went on to eBay and I found this um, gas, um, fired Rayburn, uh, really similar to an Arga, gas fired Rayburn, and it was going on like there, for, and it was like less than 10 years old, it was going for like 100 pounds or something ridiculous. So I bid on it, I thought, well, I won't win it for that price because these things cost, start at 5,000 pounds, you know, for six, five, 6,000 pounds. So I bid on it um, and I won it. Um, so I had this um, gas fired Rayburn that ran on mains gas. And then I, um, you know, I said to the landlord, um, do you mind me having this thing um, plumbed in with a, pl you know, like a gas fitter into the kitchen? And he said, no, I don't want that in the house. So <laughs> I was, um, he said, yeah, you can have it, but you can't have it plumbed in because it needs to have new pipes and everything put from the, um, the meter and everything. And um, I don't want that done. So that's fine. So I then looked into, I started researching ways to convert it to electric. And after a lot of tinkering around, I managed to convert it to electric um, and it used to just plug in and I used to use that to cook on and it was amazing. And then obviously I then dis uh, I actually went on holiday to North Yorkshire and I um, uh, there was an, um, an Arga in the kitchen, uh, exactly the same Arga that I have now. That one was running on gas, it had been converted, but it was the exact same one. Um, and I just fell in love with it. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna buy one of these. Um, like, obviously it's not gonna be working, I'm gonna buy it. Um, and then one day I'll be able to restore it, put it back into use. So I had this thing for about five years, all in pieces. And I thought, you know, one day I'll put it together. And then um, when I had the opportunity to do up the gardener's cottage, um, I thought it's the perfect place for it. So um, that's how I got into, um, to, um, you know, into Argus and, and it's because of that that Rayburn that I had to take it apart so many times to, to convert it to electric and put it back together um, that I kind of knew how these things worked. So that's how I got into them and that's how I know how to take one apart and rebuild it and restore it. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a long journey, but after six years, it's in the cottage now and it's actually been a light since before Christmas. It hasn't gone out, so you just refuel it every day and it just keeps going. Um, so it's great. And I, uh, if, you know, hopefully I'll never be without one, but um, you never know. Um, so let's have a look at another question because there are so many and I feel like I'm letting people down because I'm not answering all the questions. Uh, let's have a look. Um, will you be putting in a swimming pool and formal gardens? We're gonna be putting a swimming pool in, who knows when, we don't know. Um, because there's so many other things to do. Um, but we are gonna put one in one day and we know where it is gonna be and it's actually gonna be right round the corner from the gardener's cottage. It's gonna be great for me so I can can just walk out of my front door around the corner and just jump straight into the pool. So um, that would be great. Um, formal gardens, we're not sure about that because at the minute we don't have formal gardens, we just have normal gardens. 
big but normal um, and, and we even find that difficult to manage without a gardener at the minute. So actually having formal gardens that need constant attention, maybe not, but um, the thing is that the, the grounds around here are laid out in a, in a style called a park anglais, which means an English park, which is kind of inspired by the whole um, landscape gardener, um, capability brown, that kind of thing, uh, where um, it, it's meant to look as if it's just um, natural countryside, it hasn't been landscaped, it's just, you know, just um, as it is, but actually it has been landscaped and it's been, everything's been planted very carefully in the right place. But, um, so with that kind of style of um, grounds, you don't really need to do an awful lot of maintenance, it's just, um, you know, just making sure everything's pruned back and the grass is cut and things like that. Um, so yeah, definitely no formal gardens for now, but maybe in the future if we're, um, if we get bored, we've got nothing else to do, then maybe. Um, let's have a look. Is it difficult to get a COVID test uh, to visit Lalonde? No, it's not difficult to get a COVID test at all. Um, we just, you just have, have to make a phone call to the, the COVID test. They have like a little, um, or it's like a little mobile home, you know, like a little thing. It sits outside the hospital. You just phone them up book it in, uh, you go in and they put, uh, I've had actually three COVID tests in the last, say, uh, last two months. Uh, and they put, <laughs> it's it's really not nice. They put like a, a long stick with a little swab on the end and you have to put your head back and they put it right back into your nose and they have to twist it 10 times. Uh, and then they pull it out and uh, it's horrible, most horrible thing, but um, easy to get one. Um, they can be a bit expensive. I had one um, in um, had one in Madrid when I had to come back. Um, obviously, it's really important that you have one just before you go and one just before you come back, uh, just to make sure you're not transmitting things between countries. Um, and it was about 150 euros. Um, it's a little bit cheaper in France, um, but uh, it's not difficult to get one. It's just not pleasant. Um, um, let's have a look. I have a question. Ah. Okay, Elias is um, standing here. He's just appeared out of nowhere yeah. like a, yeah, uh, a ghost. What is the question, Elias? I just want to know where the li liquor is for the, the thing you pour in the washing machine. Oh, he wants to know where the, the, the laundry detergent is. Um, yeah. It's in the guest house in the little... I bought a new one. It's yeah. in the guest house in the, uh, the little room where the boiler is oh, by okay. the front door to the yeah. left. Thank There's you. a new bottle in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need some laundry liquid. Right, okay. Um, um, tests are free in the UK. Uh, th they are in some places, but also um, n uh, my parents had to get one because they had to go back for my grandmother's funeral um, last month. And theirs were like £150 each. So that cost them £300 just to get their COVID test, just to come back. So it, it, it can be really expensive, but obviously it's you have to do it. Um, and it's really worthwhile because, you know, as long as you've got a, a negative test result, it's great. You can go between um, some European countries um, as long as you fill out declarations and things like that. Um, but um, no, then de definitely not always free. Um, okay, anyway, so let's go on to some other questions. Enough about COVID. Um, uh, how old were you when you started playing the piano? What grade did you get to? How do you remember all the notes? Um, there were just a few questions when my girls watched you totally mesmerized. Um, that's from Two Little Girls Hairstyles. Um, uh, um, where, how old was I when I started playing piano? Nine. I was nine. Um, and I wanted piano lessons since I was five. I was quite adamant about it. Um, my parents had said, oh, yeah, 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 we'll get you piano lessons. Um, never happened. So one day when I was nine, I sort of had enough. I was like, I really want to learn to play the piano. So I... Um, I there was a, an old lady that lived across the road from us, and she was a pianist but she wasn't a teacher and she um, used to play the piano at our school for assemblies when we would sing. Um, and I asked her, I said, is there a piano teacher in the village? Um, and she gave me the address of a lady. Um, and um, uh, I literally didn't tell my parents. I um, just walked to this lady's house one day and knocked on her door. Um, I said, are you a piano teacher? She said, yes. Um, and uh, I said, well, can I have piano lessons, please? And she said, okay, um, um, do your parents know? And I said, yes, of course, yeah, uh, <laughs> they didn't. Um, and she said, okay, well, uh, come at four o'clock on Friday. 
Um, so I went home, saw my parents, oh, I've got piano lesson at um, four o'clock on Friday um, and it's nine pounds. So, um, so that's how I managed to get piano lessons. And I did that until I was 16. Um, and then after that, I kind of not got bored of it, but just kind of, um, you know, when you're 16, you're discovering the world and you just sort of want to move on to other things. So I didn't really get very high in uh, as far as grades go. I think I got to grade four or something. Um, and I was, I'm just really bad at reading music. I mean, I can read it, but I can't read it and play at the same time. I have to sort of read it first, work it out and then play it. So I'm not an amazing pianist, but I just have a good memory. So once I play something enough times, it just, it must be muscle memory or something. It just stays there. So, um, that's how I remember some things, but most songs that I've learned, I've forgotten them. So, um, just need to practice more. That's what it is. If you practice anything long enough uh, or enough times, then you know you'll pick it up. Um, uh, let's have a look. I am an aspiring interior designer. I'm curious if you have any advice for someone starting out. I don't know about interior design. Um, I think a good starting point would be to um, maybe do some interior design in your own home, maybe. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what to do, but maybe do some stuff um, and promote it on Instagram, maybe, or um, I'm not sure. I mean, how did I get into designing artwork? I mean, that was kind of completely by accident, really. Um, uh, I um, was asked to do um, just concept sketches for some other artist to, to use for inspiration, and then um, when the other artist's work was not deemed good enough, then I was actually being asked to do the completed designs. So uh, that's how I got into it, just by accident, uh, because I was uh, I had a background in art. Um, so sometimes these things, there's no real way in. You just have to, um, you just have to, I don't know, be in the right place at the right time or or I don't know, I really couldn't offer advice on how to become an interior designer, but I think just being passionate about something um, and putting your work out there, whether it be on social media or you know to friends and things like that, I think that would be um, a really good way to start. But I'm really sorry I can't offer you advice because I just fell into designing things by accident, so I couldn't really say. Um, what do you like most about the Chateau? Uh, well, what do I like? The, it's the thing that I like and dislike at the same time. Uh, not dislike, I think it's probably a strong word. But I love the fact that it's isolated. It's um, it's kind of away from the rest of the world. It's, um, it's its own bubble. But then at the same time, when you're trapped in that bubble for, you know, um, you know out of your control and for too long, it then can become sort of like a gilded cage, to be honest. So... Um, that's actually why I'm going to um, Madrid for a couple of weeks because um, I just, I, I mean, apart from doing that trip to England last year for the, to see the Beatrix Potter Cottage, um, which wasn't really a holiday. It was, it was for YouTube really. It was more, it felt like work to be honest. Apart from that, in, in probably a year and a half, two years, I haven't actually been anywhere um, for more than a couple of days. So I'm gonna get my COVID test and I'm gonna go away for a couple of weeks. Um, just to kind of take stock of everything, um, get some creativity back, uh, and then come back and just hit the hit the ground um, running. So let's have a look, see if there's some more questions. Um, are you going to Stephanie's to see Stephanie for Easter? I would love to see Stephanie for Easter because she always has the most amazing Easter parties, and it's a huge tradition at her place. But obviously, uh, with what's going on, it's not great to have huge people, um, huge groups of people coming from all over Europe to one place. Um, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, um, oh, how many eggs are you getting a day now? Uh, too many actually, we're getting, how many eggs are we getting? Elias, oh, are you there? Uh, how many eggs are we getting a day now? Uh, like 11. 11 eggs a day? From 12 chickens. From 12 chickens. Sometimes we've had five eggs a day, sometimes eight, 10, but we've never had 12 in one day, but we've, the most we've had is 11. So in fact, um, we're having to sort of 
get all of these eggs every day and dish them out to different people. So one day uh, I'll have some for the gardener's cottage. The next day um, we'll put some in the guest house for Billy, Gwen and everyone. Um, we'll give some to Sadie the next day and then we'll give some to my parents the next day. So everyone has their day. So whatever eggs are laid that day, they're, they're, um, they're whoever wants them basically. So yeah, we're, we're gonna have to eat a lot of eggs, a lot of omelets, I think. Um, but actually, great at the minute because I'm, uh, I've now been working out um, uh, with my friend Florian, who's a, a training to be a personal trainer. Um, so, and he keeps saying, you need to eat loads of protein. So, um, we've got all of these eggs and they're fresh. So, um, it's great for me. It's great for all of us. Um, did you always, uh, let's have a look. Did you always know how you wanted uh, the gardener's cottage or want the cottage to look? Well, I did have, um, originally I had an idea of how I wanted it to look. I wanted it to just be plastered walls, done with lime plaster, the traditional, traditional way. Uh, and then obviously, um, because, you know, it, it can, I mean, right now it's, it's not gone above eight degrees here, like in the last week, it's actually quite cold. Um, in the winter, it's freezing. Um, so it, I couldn't just put plaster on the stone walls because the cottage would have been so cold. So I had to put insulation. Um, and then I didn't just want plasterboard on insulation because it can look really modern. So um, I um, decided to have um, put the insulation up and have this lovely oak panelling over the top, which is a nice backdrop for the kitchen units to go on. Um, and um, yeah, so it kind of has evolved and it's still evolving now. I mean, um, I'm glad that I didn't actually draw up plans because um, the plans that I would have drawn up a long time ago would not be um, practical now. So um, I've just let it evolve. I've let the building basically dictate, dictate um, how it's going to be, basically. So no plans. Um, and um, but it kind of is looking how I wanted, to be honest. The, the vision that I had in my mind just before Christmas, what I, I did like a little painting of it for the Patreon Christmas card. Uh, and it's really strange because I did that just from my mind. And then actually to see it kind of finished, it, it's identical. So um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's looking. So, um, but obviously uh, what I originally planned for it was, is not what is in there now, so. Um, Let's have a look. Questions. Uh, yes, I, it, people are donating money. You should thank them. Yes, but I can't. Uh, the thing is, that it's shooting fast so fast. So if anyone has donated any money to me, like I'm, I'm so thankful. Like you really don't have to do that. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much. But but I can't see it on my screen. Um, oh, Michael P. Is that me? Uh, um, I, I could I can scroll back, but only so far. Um, Oh, Melanie Hartness, thank you so much, Melanie. Um, uh, that's as far as back as I can go. So if you have if you have made a donation, thank you so much, and that will go towards the gardener's cottage. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. Um, so, um, uh, so I'm, getting, I'm getting distracted here. The thing is, it can be a bit chaotic doing these live videos because I've got so many things to think about. You've got to try and read the questions. You've got to try and think what did was the question answer it and then but then you maybe you can talk for too long and then you have to then go back oh actually wait i'm asking questions people are asking questions here um and uh, i'm missing them so can you show us the upstairs in the cottage please yeah i can show you the upstairs in the cottage but nothing's happened up there it's just being used for storage at the minute um but it will be done in the next couple of months um it's it it just needs uh, it needs completely um, uh, boarding out with like stud stud work, you call it, which is basically wooden posts. Um, and then it needs to be packed with loads of insulation um, because a lot of the heat from the cottage right now, the, the heat coming from the Argus is just going straight up out of the roof. So that needs to be packed with insulation and then it needs to have, I think we call it plasterboard, but I think maybe in the States you might call it dry lining. I'm not sure. Um, and then that all needs to be jointed. Um, plastered, painted. Uh, obviously the electrician um, in the meantime will have to go through and, and rewire um, all the um, wire it all up. So um, drywall, yeah, I can see that. 
Um, um, and um, yeah, so I won that stand, but obviously there's something more important, which is the roof on the park next door. That needs re-roofing re first before I can put the bathroom in. Um, and also I need to get that bit done because that's where the cylinder is gonna go for the hot water that's gonna be heated by the Argo. So that needs to be all put in, the heating system needs to go in. Um, plumber has been and said he can do it, but we're not sure when, because he's really busy. Um, uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Undefined reality, $50, thank you so much. Um, that is so kind of you. I've just got this huge pink banner that's just appeared on my screen. Um, that is so kind. That's definitely, that's gonna go towards the gardener's cottage um, and um, that will help get things done a bit quicker, to be honest, because um, it's just been, it's just been, <laughs> I know like a lot of people um, donated money to, 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 um, towards the, the gardener's cottage, which has been absolutely amazing because it would not happen without that. But actually, um, most of that has gone like you'd be so surprised where the money goes i mean just having maybe like having sean in for a week could cost me 600 euros you know so um and i couldn't do a lot of the stuff in there without him so you know it, it can it can just it just goes just goes like that the carpenter's amazing and the quality of the work is amazing that he's done um and the kitchen will last 100 years the way he's built it but it's expensive so, um, and obviously I didn't want to do up the gardener's cottage um, in something that wouldn't be befitting of, you know, the, the, the chateau. I mean, the craftsman um, ship, the craftsmanship in this building is unbelievable and it stood the test of time. Uh, and I wanted the, you know, the cottage to be of the same quality um, and that doesn't come cheap. So um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just waiting to kind of recoup a bit more money first and then continue. So it's all gonna, get done and it's gonna be spectacular when it's done, but it's not gonna happen like overnight. So next few months, you'll see a lot more work happening in there again. Um, let's have a look. What do I do in my spare time? Um, what do I do in my spare time? I just don't really do anything in my spare time because I, I, like, there's not a lot. I don't, the thing is with YouTube is, it's, it's not, you're always, if you're not actually making a video or editing, you're always thinking about it. And then there's the whole social media side of it with the comments and um, and all of that. And there's there's so many things to think about. You actually just can't switch off. Like I go to sleep thinking about the next video and wake up sleeping thinking about the next video. And then actually sometimes it can all kind of get too much. Um, and then you you just can't perform. You know, you can't um, you can't. I don't know what you you Elias is sat here next to me. Uh, like, do you want to come and say hello to everyone? Yeah, yeah. you've seen it. It can, it, I can get a bit, Hi. I can get a bit stressed out sometimes. Yeah. So you can. Um, so yeah, sometimes it can get a bit much, but um, it's great. Like, it's an amazing um, opportunity. Like, you know, I never thought I'd be making YouTube videos, so I'm really, really thankful. Um, but I'm still getting used to the idea, even after a year. So on the 20th of March, it's going to be the one year anniversary of the um, the YouTube channel. So I'm going to have to do something special for that and I don't know what <laughs> I'm thinking about making a whole new title sequence a bit shorter but a bit be better quality um but not that it wasn't good quality. I know it was it was good I even surprised myself when I made it like but um but yeah so I've got to um get that get the the anniversary video to maybe I'll just go back through all of the videos and and put all of the best bits from the whole year um, into one video with some bloopers and things like that. Maybe that'll be good. So um, let's have a look. Uh, Michael, do you realize how similar Billy and you sound? Yeah, we do. We do sound really similar. Um, <laughs> and I mean, when we were children, people used to think we were twins, although there's two years between us. Um, they used to think we were twins. Um, but um, yeah, we are similar. And, and some people, when I did the, the voiceover for the Chateau Rescue thing, um, uh, people wasn't sure whether it was my voice or Billy's, um, but it was mine. Um, um, but yeah, he, we do sound really similar. I think his voice is a bit deeper than mine, actually. Um, I don't know. I, he sounds like him to me, and I sound like me, but I don't know. Yeah, we are so, Sometimes when you're in another room than me, then I can't really tell. If you just say a short word or something, yeah. I can't really tell if it's you or uh, Billy yeah, in that yeah. room. Yeah, so we, we have, we have got a similar voice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, uh, how are Billy and Gwen keeping the chateau going during all the shutdowns? Um, well, I they obviously have the the bed and breakfast, not the bed and breakfast. It's like the holiday business in the in the um, the guest house. So they um, the French government have a scheme where um, they it's not a lot, but they do. Um, uh, compensate you for losses um, because um, tourism has been shut down by the government obviously they have to um, uh, help, help people out so they've been doing that um, but really there's been no real income here at the Chateau like it's just um, you know um, their, their personal money that's been you know just keeping the place going so um, yeah it's 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 not been great um, but it's not been great for a lot of other people so you know we can't really complain um, we're all in the same boat, so um, it, it'll get better, hopefully soon, but we'll never know. Uh, yeah, we'll go back to normal. I think everything, things are starting to go back to normal around the world, slowly. Um, um, you know, things are um, opening back up. France is very difficult at the minute because um, although you can go to shops during the day, there's no cafes open, no bars, no restaurants, no cinemas, no museums, nothing, nothing's open. Um, the, you can just go into shops and from 6 p.m. in the evening till 6 a.m. you can't leave the house unless it's for something really important. Um, so it's, you are basically, you know, from six o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the morning, you're under house arrest. Um, so it's, it is, it's literally, it does still feel like a lockdown here in France, although there isn't a lockdown. Um, um, but you can uh, have a COVID test, um, fill out a declaration, and you can go to another country in Europe um, where things are open. Um, so like say Madrid, for example, you know, everything's pretty much open. You have to wear a mask in the street um, and be in by 11 o'clock at night. But um, apart from that, it's just life as normal, to be honest. So um, I, I think we're kind of lucky here that we have this big land and different buildings you yeah. can move between. But even though I've only been here for like a month and one week or two yeah. weeks now, um, you like mentally, you feel kind of that it's only here you can be. You can't go to a restaurant in yeah. town or something. Yeah, it's, yeah you do. It, it's, um, it's nice in one way because, you know, when you're at home, it just feels like um, everything's normal. But when you want to go out and do things that you can't. So, um, yeah, it's it's good in some ways and not good in others. So, But I mean, there are a lot of people in, in much worse situations. So um, we we'll, uh, we'll really do count ourselves lucky here. So um, I hear France is expensive. Yes, France is very expensive, a lot more expensive than the UK. Uh, the price of food, the taxes, uh, everything. It's just way, 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 way higher. Um, um, it's, 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 it's not easy to get rich in France. I say, I can tell you that, like, cause the, the taxes are ridiculous. So anything you make uh, above a certain thing, they might want 40, 50% even. So, um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a nice country, but very expensive. So, um, uh, have any parts of the chateau, um, have any parts of the chateau you don't film to the YouTube. So are, are there any parts of the chateau that haven't been on YouTube? Um, what don't I film here? Uh, I mean, I've pretty much filmed everything. Um, I mean, there are some deep dark corners of the basements and the attics and that, that I probably haven't filmed, but um, nothing really goes on there. So um, um, yeah, so there are, I mean, there's like, I haven't filmed in my parents' house because that's their personal space, you know, like, um, and like, I don't film in my bedroom usually because it's that's the, <laughs> the only place I don't film. So it's nice to kind of have somewhere that's not um, like just put out into the world for everyone to see. Um, but um, apart from that, you pretty much see everything that goes on here. But obviously there, there are, this place is so big. Um, there are places that I maybe don't go for, for maybe months, you know, um, like I hadn't been into the forest for a couple of months, you know, um, and it's just there. Um, but you, but you just kind of forget, like sometimes I'll walk around upstairs and, and, you know, I'll think, oh, we've got all of these bedrooms up here that nobody ever goes in. Like, uh, to be honest, it, it's, just, it's probably too much space here, to be honest. But um, 
I'm sure we'll find uses for all of it one day. Um, but um, and Billy and Gwen are just going to have to have loads of children, I think, to, to fill, up all the, <laughs> fill up all the bedrooms. They're going to have to, yeah, <laughs> to fill the place up. Yeah. Um, uh, Stephanie filmed an ancient poo system. Perhaps you could find uh, the one at your chateau. Yes, there is an old one somewhere. Apparently, it's uh, a brick vaulted tunnel uh, that's big enough for um, two people to stand up in side by side and walk down. We were told by somebody that um, was actually born in one of the outbuildings, um, like the which is now the neighbor's house. It used to be like the stable block, which has a cottage on the side. He was actually born in there. Um, and he said that he had been in it a long, long time ago but we can't find the entrance for it. So that's the old sewer system. Um, and yeah, we don't know where it is. We've got a rough idea, but we can't find an entrance to it. Yeah, um, Billy's been out there digging with the digger. Yeah, Billy's been out with the digger trying to dig holes in the ground to try and find it, but we, we can't find it. It goes out the back of the chateau somewhere, off into the distance, um, underground. Is it easy to get the COVID vaccine in France? Um, I don't know because they are not really vaccinating my age group at the moment. Although my father did have his a couple of days ago. Um, so dad's vaccinated because he's in the older age group. I think they're doing it, um, the, you know, in sort of age order. So you have the sort of over 65s or over 75s first, and then they're going to work their way down. So probably uh, will be the, the last um, age group to get it. Um, so not quite yet, but um, obviously... Um, younger people are at uh, lower risk of, of complications from it. So, um, so it's, it's best to, to vaccinate the, the more vulnerable people first. So, um, but yeah, I think so. I saw a sign today on the road for a COVID vaccination center. So which I didn't know was there. So, um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, what would be your role when the chateau is up and running? Um, my role will be what it's always been, I guess. Um, just uh, just doing odd jobs here and there, making YouTube videos. I don't know, just being me. Um, there's always something to do here, so that you know you'll never you'll never be bored. Um, um, let's have a look. Um, is there any questions here? Think of my idea of adding on to the cottage. Um, I, I'm not. I've got not got any plans to actually make any um, add-ons to the cottage. Somebody did message saying about the the little sort of lean-to building next door that could be added onto the cottage, but that would mean that there's, there's actually a route that you have to walk down the side of the gardener's cottage to get from the chateau to the walled garden, um, which actually extending that and attaching it to the cottage would um, would mean that you'd have to walk around the whole like half of the wall garden to get into it so it's not really an option and um, that place is actually great for um uh for storing things like the fuel for the agar and things so uh um let's have a look um have you ever been to the us and if so which state is your favorite I have been to the US, but I didn't leave the airport because I was getting a connecting flight to Mexico a long, long time ago. So I technically have been to Houston in Texas, but I, yeah, I didn't leave the airport. Um, but it was it was um, definitely fun while I was there because the, uh, the minute the plane landed, there was a huge, huge, huge lightning and rainstorm and they grounded the whole airport just as my flight landed. So uh, luckily we weren't flying around in circles for hours. Um, or diverted, but yeah, I was in I was in Houston International Airport for four hours once. Um, but I would love to go to the US, but um, um, where would I go? Like, <laughs> it's such a huge place. Um, do I just go where like tourists go, or you know, it, I don't know. I'd, I'd need like a guide, I, I think, or someone you know, maybe go and visit different places, but, um, do a bit of a tour because uh, I'd love to go there, but. Um, what part? I don't know. Do you go to California? Do you go to New York? Do you go to um, Texas? Do you go like north? Like, you know, the, do you go to the middle? Like, where do you go? It's a huge, huge, huge place. Um, I, I haven't even seen the whole of the UK, which is tiny in comparison. So, um, yeah, one day, one day I'll, I'll um, go and see all of it. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. Any more questions? Uh, come to Vancouver instead. Do you know what? I'd love to go to Vancouver. 
because I um, used to have a friend, Nikki, from uh, Vancouver when I lived in Manchester, and she was lovely, and she said that Vancouver was amazing. So um, I think it's, it's in British Columbia. Yeah, I'd love to go to Vancouver. Um, really nice city, apparently. Um, come to North Carolina. I'd love to go. I'd love to go uh, there. New Zealand, yeah. I'm gonna have to come to Florida. Yeah, I'll I'll go everywhere. I'll just do a world tour. Maybe that <laughs> that'll be a brilliant. Go, like literally, spend like six months just traveling the world, or maybe even a year traveling the world and just YouTubing everything. Doing it ourselves. Yeah, world tour. D doing it ourselves. The world tour. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be brilliant. Um, um, come to Argentina. I'd love to. I'd love to go everywhere. Um, Seattle is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, uh. How did you meet Elias? Uh, well, Elias emailed me um, after the first time that I said that I would could do some help filming videos, um, and I didn't even see the email because I get so many that I just they get they get lost. Um, and then it was quite persistent. He you sent me a message on Instagram, a private yeah. message, and I don't normally see my um, you know a lot of the messages. I get so many messages on Instagram, I can't read them all. So. Um, you were lucky that that day uh, it was like the first one that popped up. So I read it and then you said, oh, I sent you an email. So I then went and checked for the email with your name. And then um, he said, oh, I can come and help you, um, you know. Um, you, well, you said come and help do DIY and stuff. I said, well, I don't really need help with DIY, but I need help with filming. So um, I said, if you can hold a camera, um, fine, um, get a flight and you can come and stay here and uh yeah you did but i'm doing both now are oh, you doing both <laughs> yeah in fact he's, he's spending less time helping me and actually helping everyone else which yeah. is good which is he's been helping my father in his cottage you've been doing the insulation haven't you uh what else have you you've been doing Some loads of stuff boards. plasterboard gardening just, work just uh there. yeah he, he's kind of helps everyone so he's very helpful um and it's nice to have some help sometimes where is ryan ryan was here this Until this morning. Ryan's been here for the last couple of weeks. Um, but, you know, Ryan... Is, every time I film now, Ryan's not around anymore because he's filming his own YouTube stuff. So um, he's just gone away to do a little a little r road trip around France mm. to film. What he's going to film, I don't know because nothing's really open. Um, but I'm sure he'll make it interesting. Yeah, <laughs> so um, come to... Okay, let's try and read some of these ones here. Uh, Oh, let's have a look. Uh, will you be restoring the wall garden and bring it back to life? Uh, yeah, the Ryan, uh, the, Ryan, sorry, the, <laughs> thinking about Ryan. The wall garden needs a lot of work. Um, be nice to have it uh, put back as it was. Well, actually we did, Ryan found some aerial photographs from the 1950s of the wall garden and it looked completely different. Um, it, it looked like somebody had completely plowed it up and were, um, were growing crops in there. So we've no idea what, what was originally where um, it, it was usually, it was before it was half orchard and half, um, um, half, um, just like vegetable gardens. Question, was there any asbestos in the chateau? Um, no, there may have been, but it probably was removed by previous owners. A lot of people have had concerns about the, um, um, the insulation around the, the heating pipes, which run along the ceiling in the bath, um, in the basement, sorry, I'm getting, uh, Getting confused now. Um, but they're not actually asbestos, they're glass fibre wrapped in plaster. Um, like bandages with plaster of Paris, you know, the ones you soak. But when you break your arm, it's the same stuff. So it's just glass fibre, insula fiberglass insulation with like plaster cast stuff wrapped around it. So um, there's no asbestos in the chateau. And none in the outbuildings, so we're quite lucky with that. In fact, I think the chateau's not really been tampered with very much in, since the 1920s had a few alterations in the 1950s, I think, but nothing major. So it's pretty much like as it was, um, which is good really, because, um, you know, sometimes these old buildings can have so much done to them that they're not really the way they um, were designed. So we're lucky with that one. Um, let's have a look. Um, Ryan has a girlfriend now. I, Ryan is dating somebody. Oh, I haven't met her. Um, but um, maybe I'll meet her if it brings her here. But I think maybe that's where he's gone, uh, actually, um, on, a, on an extended date, possibly. So oh, yeah. um, do you collect anything other than Spode? I do collect, um, what do I collect? I used to collect Booth's Willow, Silicon China. Uh, I still have, I have 
quite a good collection of that. Um, um, but it's it's too old and too fragile to use every day. So the, I like the, I like the fact that Spode is is pretty, but it's not porcelain. It's it's sturdy. You know, you can use it every day, uh, which is good. So I I will have some stuff that's not Spode for display, but. Um, yeah, I like Spode because it's pretty and yeah, you can use it every day. So, um, Chateau Rescue updates. I um, I know about as much as you because all I am doing um, uh, is the voiceover. So it's down to Billy and Phil um, when they um, present me with an episode and a script. So f as far as uh, Chateau Rescue is going, I I think they're working on it, but I'm not sure. They say, please give Elias a hair trim. We're actually going to actually, the yeah, right. tomorrow. Uh, we're going to um, Ren tomorrow because uh, the hairdressers is open, uh, the one that I go to, it's open now. Um, so I'm going to be going and getting my hair cut tomorrow and I'm going to treat Elias to a haircut as well. So, um, yeah. Um, let's have a look. Um, I'm seeing a lot of, um, will you be filming in Madrid? Yes, I will be. Um, I can't like not go there and not film because, um, I need to keep making YouTube videos, um, to, to keep the channel going really. Um, uh, if I'd stopped making videos for a long, long time, I think people would kind of lose interest or forget about it. So, um, I'll be making videos there, um, probably more historical and cultural things because there are amazing museums there with some, um, I mean, uh, you've got loads and loads of who, who's that you've got um there's a lot of picasso um and you've got all of the goya uh goya can be a bit controversial but some of his um artwork is absolutely amazing not the the scary stuff the his portraits and things are amazing and and there's um the the palaces that you know the, the palace that you can go and see um and just so many different things there's even uh, an art gallery that is a palace um that uh, has got beautiful furniture and stuff. I'd love to go and see all of this stuff. So I'll be making YouTube videos about about that for a couple of weeks, and then I'll be back doing the gardener's cottage. Um, um, let's have a look. Do you plan on doing? What do you plan on doing with the servants' rooms in the chateau's upper floors? One could be a lovely art room. Well, one of the servants' bedrooms is is my bedroom, um, but we, we're not. Um, We've all moved out of the chateau at the minute. Um, we're in the guest house, but um, but my room in the chateau is one of the old servants' bedrooms because I wanted to be up on the top floor. Um, um, but the rest of them, um, we don't know. Um, they could just be storage rooms or, yeah, an art room would be great. Um, um, they'd be nice just to have them as little guest bedrooms, you know? Um, there's a there's there's a use for all of these rooms. We'll just have to work out what we're going to use them for. To be honest, but we're still only just completing the first floor at the minute. Um, not the first, yeah, the first floor being the first floor in this state. We had this discussion, didn't yeah. we? And the first floor being not this floor, the ground floor that we're on the next one up. Which the first floor in the states is actually the ground floor. So um, the second floor. Uh, so we're yeah, the first floor above this one. That's not finished, but it's nearly finished. So as soon as that's done, we can move on to the next floor. And then when that's done, we can move on to the floor above that. So um, it's gonna be a long, long, um, long process, but eventually we'll we'll get it all done. But is the plan that you're still going to have that room as yours when you're living in the cottage? No, no, no. When I live in the cottage, I won't need that bedroom. Somebody no. else can have it. Yeah. Um, who, we don't know, but uh, be good to put guests in there because it's a nice bedroom you know some people quite like to be sort of up on higher floors and a bit more privacy so um yeah well somebody will, will make a use for it um uh let's have a look is the chateau actually haunted um I, to be honest i don't think it is to be honest i mean i think if that I think maybe some people might be more sensitive to that kind of thing than others, and I've never really seen anything. I um, haven't held anything. Or no, there's nothing really. I mean, when there, there was a, there was actually a, about a month when we we'd been here for about a year that everyone kept saying, "Oh, I keep seeing something out of the corner of my eye, like." It's like something moves and then I look and it's nothing there. We had that for about a month and then nothing. 
I think if there is a spirit here, then it's obviously quite pleased that we are. Nice one. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're bringing that old home back to life um, sympathetically. Um, so if there is a ghost, they haven't got a problem with us, so and we haven't got a problem with them. So um, maybe something will appear one day and I'll um, have a fright. But for now, yeah, no, there's nothing. Actually, um, I did get a feeling that there was something in the gardener's cottage, but obviously it wasn't uh, uh, anything evil. I just kept seeing something out of the corner of my eye. But yeah, so but not for a long time, so yeah. I don't think the place is haunted, to be honest, but you never know. Um, maybe somebody who's like a medium or something should come here and have a, a little bit of an investigate. Uh, you know, some people can pick things up that other people can't, so that'd be great. Um, but I would like to do a bit of a ghost tour, just for the fun of it, you know, I actually make sure, turn all the lights off in the chateau and go around with just a torch and um, uh, get a bit hysterical, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that'd be quite funny. It could be just be dust flying about, yeah, and that's probably true because there's plenty of dust in this yeah. place and that place as well. So, um, uh, is there anything you live miss about living in Manchester? The only thing I miss about that place is my friends. Um, apart from that, um, not really. I sort of I've always found um, my home is wherever I am. To be honest, um, I've never really been a completely attached to places. So. Um, have you sorted the out the upstairs in the gardener's cottage? No, no, nothing's been done in the gardener's cottage apart from the new floor that needs to be done. Um, let's have a look. Ghost tour would be fun. Yeah, actually, actually, I know uh, a guy, an English guy, who is, um, that's what he does. He's like a ghost hunter. He has all of the equipment. I don't know what equipment you have as a ghost hunter, like things that beep and stuff. I don't know. Um, what, what, what do ghost hunters use, you yeah. know, like... Um, don't know, but he has all of this equipment, apparently, uh, stuff that picks up radio signals and electrostatic and I don't know. Um, and we talked about getting him here to do a, a ghost tour and have a look around with his equipment and see if he can pick anything up and pick up voices and things. Um, yeah, I'll give him a call, actually. Yeah, that might be coming quite soon. So, yeah, look out for the, the ghost tour. I mean, it's, not, it's nowhere near Halloween, but I mean... Everyone loves a ghost ghost tour, don't they? So it doesn't matter what time of year it is. Um, so yeah, how about a murder mystery weekend? Yeah, we, I'd love to do a murder mystery weekend, but I'd have to have Stephanie here for that. Um, couldn't do it without her. So as soon as she's um, <laughs> doing it ourselves, Yvette Fielding. Do you know what? I'd like to. We should contact Yvette Fielding. She's probably out of work at the minute, so <laughs> we'll have to get her here and she can do a, a ghost hunting with the vet fielding uh, and doing it ourselves. Um, uh, miss you and Stephanie spending time together. Need a fix in. Yeah, I miss spending time with Stephanie. Um, uh, but we will be reunited soon. Um, I've, I've done a ghost hunt at Spode Mill Got a few lithographs from there. I'll try and find them. That's brilliant. Uh, please do the ghost tour. Uh, do you guys use the chapel at all? No, we don't really use it for anything. Um, we just make sure that it's the, you know, the rain isn't coming through the roof and um, the, the windows aren't falling out and um, just maintain it. But what what do you um, what do you use chapel for apart from um, prayer? Um, which, to be honest, uh, I don't really do. So. Um, it's not big enough to have like co it's, small concerts. It's not. It's not big enough to so. have really a ceremony with more than about eight people, to be honest. So um, you can't really have a wedding in there um, unless it's really, really intimate. Um, so we just have it and we maintain it and we love it, but we don't really use it. I mean, it might be nice to use it for something one day, but I think it's a bit to try and turn it into something else would be or you know convert it into it's too small to convert into a house like um it's nice to just keep it as it is and just make sure it's there for future generations um, and that it doesn't fall down so you should do a collaboration with christine mcconnell somebody said i actually i um have uh spoke to christine mcconnell a few times actually and uh i did put the idea to her once but um i haven't really spoke to her in a while to be honest uh, but she's actually one of my patrons, Christine McConnell, which I think is like bizarre. 
because she's like amazing and I love um, her Patreon um, show that she does and also I loved her Netflix show. So, um, and it's strange that when I first started making YouTube videos, she contacted me. Um, um, and yeah, so maybe one day um, uh, we'll do a collaboration with Christine. Um, let's have a look. How long have we been on live now? 70 minutes. Okay, well, I'll go a bit longer. Um, let's try and answer some more questions. Uh, you need to consider putting your artwork on beddings and curtains, please. You will be great at it. I, I, I'm, I never thought about bedding and curtains, but um, I did think about cushions, maybe. Uh, apart from printed artwork, I think maybe cushions. I wanted to do a line um, of... Um, like kitchen wear, you know, like um, kitchen textiles. So oven gloves and aprons and tea towels and that kind of stuff. Stuff that I would like to have in the gardener's cottage. Um, stuff that I would use. So um, so maybe, yeah, I'll, the first thing I'm gonna do is, is apart from artworks that you can buy, just prints, um, it's gonna be, yeah, oven gloves and tea towels, um, aprons. Um, what else do you, what other kitchen textiles do you have? Um, um, someone's just asked, is the camera guy single? Are you single? Yeah. Yeah, he's single and um, looking for... Uh, wait, to be honest, you like Swedish girls, don't you? Like, that's what you yeah. say. He says he doesn't like... It's not seen any French girls that he likes, so... <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. Maybe maybe you have to have a look around. We're going to Ren tomorrow. Maybe see, we can ask someone for their number or something. <laughs> Bigger city. <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, he's single. Um, I'm single as well, uh, but I'm not really looking at the minute, so um, you never know, someone might come along. Um, uh, let's have a look. Um, do an acoustic set and a ghost hunt in the chapel. Uh, I mean, actually, we could do you could, you, you could play the piano, couldn't you? Hmm. He plays the piano and the drums and the marimba. Yeah. What else do you play? Like percussion stuff. Percussion. Mm -hmm. He's good at that. So, but we haven't got any drums, drum kit. We haven't got a drum kit. We haven't got an, a marimba. No. He's actually really good at marimba. I've seen a, a video of a concert. <laughs> like, really good. Like, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, that's like amazing. So, come to Greece. I'd love to come to Greece. I'd love to come anywhere that's um, not in lockdown. But, um, um, what about Gustavo? Uh, what about Gustavo? Um, we are just friends, um, uh, so yeah. Um, is there any jobs that you cannot do? Seems like you have a dab hand at everything. Well, yeah, I like just get, I, the thing is with me, I'll give anything a go um, to a certain extent, and then um, yeah, I just like I like to pick up pick up things, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting really uh, distracted here. There's so many questions here. Um, Will Billy get his broken Range Rover back soon? He managed to move it today. He had to, yeah. he, because he's the, he needs to cut the grass around the chateau and there's a lot of grass um, and he's got a big lawnmower and it was in the garage, um, at, but behind the Range Rover and the Range Rover was in the way so he couldn't get the, the lawnmower out. So did he, he have to do some stuff on it today to try just so he could move it? Yeah, just put it all together. But when you drive it, it sounds like. Oh yeah, so it's, it's not really drivable, no. but he had to, put stuff in the engine back together just to, so we can move it today. But um, it, to be honest, I think it needs to go back to England um, to a, a Land Rover specialist to be to be repaired. And at the minute, that's not really an option. So it'll get it fixed soon. Um, your opinion on Meghan and Harry? Uh, oh, I don't really have an opinion. I haven't really been following it, to be honest. Um, if they have been bullied, um, then that's awful. Um, if they are just trying to make money, then that's awful as well. I don't know. But who knows? I I'll have to watch the interview. I mean, I'm 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 I would say I wouldn't say I'm a I'm a, I would say I'm a royalist. I like the royal. I like the I like the Queen and Prince Philip. They're great. They're old school. Um, the generations after that. It can be, you know, there's a bit of controversy there. Um, so who knows? Um, um, but I'm, I'm for the Queen and uh, Prince Philip. I think they're fantastic. And they're, um, they're real troopers. 
And there's no retiring from a job like that. You just have to, you know, the queen, she's, she'll have to be the queen until she dies. She doesn't, she can't retire. So um, that's the, that service for you. Um, but Harry and Meghan, I don't know. I, I have to watch the interview, to be honest. Um, to be honest, uh, yeah. Um, I thought it was great when they got married and it was nice that they were part of the royal family. And you know, it's a bit more diversity, but um, obviously it wasn't for them or they didn't have a good experience. So we'll have to see anyway. Um, uh, does Bertie have a posh bed too? No, Bertie doesn't have a posh bed because he chews up every yeah. bed that I give him at the minute. He had a beautiful wicker basket that I put in front of the Argo. It's destroyed. He's chewed it to pieces. Um, um, and he has toys that he can chew, but he likes just to chew the... Um, to the uh, the wicker basket. So um, wait till he's got a bit older, and then he can have a nice bed. When you'll be fixing the carriage, no idea. That's that's Billy's that's Billy's project. Um, which Hogwarts house are you? Uh, actually, I did a test. There's a test online. You can do like a questionnaire, and I got Slytherin. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. In the, in they're usually like the baddies in the movies, but um, there you go. Um, are, are you a go clubbing person or a more of a drinks at the pub guy? Uh, I'm more of a, not a pub going guy or really a club kind of person. I like bars with music. Is that, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, bars with music. Yeah. Like, so you can kind of have a drink, maybe have a little dance, but like somewhere in between. But still like chat. Yeah, so you can still chat, but there's music and a bit of atmosphere. Like that's kind of, that's what I like. Um, not really into proper clubbing clubbing that's um something that i would do very rarely um but enjoy um um how are you happy with the chandelier repair billy did i loved it better than the um wooden balls <laughs> um yeah uh what chandelier repair was that was that in is one of his is it the ongoing one uh, there, <coughs> there is an ongoing chandelier yeah. repair um it might have been in one of his videos but i haven't actually seen all of billy's videos to be honest uh, most of them, but if it was in one that I didn't see, I think he's he's released about seven videos this month. Yeah, he's just so he's just like he's um, putting me to shame at the minute. So um, there is a chandelier being restored in the, another room, and it looks great. Uh, he's really good at that. Um, most of the chandeliers in this place, he's actually bought broken, damaged, with missing parts, and repaired them, put them back together, found new parts, and and that's why the the chateau has. A full set of chandeliers in every single room because um before that uh when the, they bought the place there was nothing there were they all the chandeliers had been stripped out um sold off um and there were just wires with light bulbs on the end that was it so um he's um yeah he's great um because they're so expensive to be you know in perfect condition the antique chandeliers are so so expensive we could not have afforded to actually put them all back so because he's bought them all broken or you know put them back together, then um, that's why we have them. Um, I would, uh, let's have a look. Elias, tell us a bit about yourself. That's from Wally Beep. Okay, come on. You take the, uh, you take the stage. Actually, I need to go to the bathroom really quickly so you can talk to the people and answer their questions for a minute. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this feels a bit awkward, but um, yeah, I'm a... Why does this happen right when Michael goes away? Oh, no. Now I'm back. Um, some people are writing uh, comments in Swedish. Uh, uh, yeah, I, ca I can't see them. I understand, Michael. Everything just... Goes like that. Yeah, frozen, but I'm back, I think. Um, you can do this, Elias. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, someone said I look tired, and I actually am. Uh, we are awake pretty early in the mornings. Um, sometimes I go and let out the chickens in the mornings, give them food. Um, so it's been a long day doing a live video this late now, but... I'm back. Yeah, now he's back, saving Sorry, I me. I just had to run to the other end of the building. It's a long way. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay, so 79 minutes. Okay, well, I'll go for another 10 minutes and then I'm going to have to go because it is 
Uh, at the minute, it's 20 past 12 at night here, so... I need to sleep. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can go. You, you can go if you want. Yeah. You don't have to stay, but it's nice to have some company because... It's interesting. The chateau is completely empty. There's nobody else yeah. in here, so everyone's in the guest house. Put your finger on the words. They will stop scrolling fast. Good. Yeah, it works, actually. Um, let's have a look. What is your favourite thing about the chateau, Elias? Come. Um... I like I like one thing that's actually it just uh, that you have a piano. Uh, we've and, got two pianos. Yeah, yeah. and uh, like just the grand uh, staircase and the big windows in the staircase. Oh yeah, I they're really amazing. Because you can go up the staircase, stand yeah. on the landing, and you can look out over the land. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, some questions. Do you watch How to Renovate a Chateau Without Killing Your Partner? Yes, actually, I do watch it sometimes. I haven't seen all of them, um, but there was one... What was the last one? About making the wallpaper. Amazing. She makes her own wallpaper. It's, like, fantastic. Um, so, be nice to give that a try, actually. Um, that, actually, no, there's a new one. Uh, couple Problems or something like that. Couple Problems? I haven't seen that one yet. I have to watch that. Um... Uh, but uh, yeah, I do watch it. I, I I do occasionally watch a lot of the Chateau YouTube channels just now and again. If I if it pops up on my feed, I'll give it a little watch. But I don't have a lot of time to watch YouTube. But when I do, it's nice to see what other people are up to. Um, uh, will you, Michael, will you L I S Lisk? What's that? I don't know what that means. Oh, where? My dog says hi from Christina Luciano. Oh, to your dog. Hello. Hi, dog. <laughs> <laughs> How is the chateau roof? The chateau roof's fine, actually. Billy um, bought the cherry picker. Well, it's the second cherry picker he bought because the first one was a bit old. But um, he bought that specifically to make repairs um, himself so that we didn't have to pay roofers to put scaffolding up, and, and like, which is just ridiculous. So when you don't have a, like, a budget of millions, you, you have to do a lot of these things yourself. So... Um, yeah, it's cheaper to buy a cherry picker and fix the roof yourself than it is to actually employ roofers to go up there and do it. So, and that way, if a tile comes off in in, the, in a storm, you can go up there the next day and do it yourself. Whereas to get a company in would be oh, it would be so expensive. Yeah, and you can use the cherry picker as like a crane as you have that done. That thing's so useful. I mean, yeah. they picked up the beam, the, the new beam for the gardener's cottage. It's not meant for that, but it's capable of lifting that sort of weight. Um, so it's just been so useful. I mean, to, to, from to that, to lifting the boiler into the basement, the new boiler for the Chateau Central Heating, it lifted that in. So it, it's, it's got more uses than just um, fixing the roof. So um, it's, the Chateau roof's great um, at the moment. It needs a few new pieces of zinc, I think. One of the ridges it needs replacing, but apart from that, it's fine. There's no water coming in. Um, let's have a look. Driver's license. A lot of people are asking about um, driver's license. To be honest, actually, people have been speculating. It's like, has Michael been banned from driving? Um, <laughs> no, I've never had a driving license to start with, to be honest. I, um, when I was 18, no, just turned 19, I moved to Manchester and um, I lived in the very centre of the city, uh, no parking space, um, and I'd never... Um, needed to drive a car, so I thought, oh, it's, I'll do it, you know, another time, another time in the future, like when I need to drive. Because in the Manchester, the public transport's amazing. They have trams, uh, taxis, but free buses, everything. Like, so um, I mean, there's um, there's one road in Manchester that there's a bus every sixty seconds. Like, literally, there's so many. So I never needed to, a driving license until I moved from Manchester to France, and then. I've never seen a bus here. <laughs> no, I've never seen a bus here. <laughs> Only the ones that pick up the school kids, maybe. That's it. Um, so um, I, I kind of got to the point where now it's enough is enough. Uh, I was going to take my driving test back in England because you have to speak really good French, I think, to be honest, to be able to uh, understand completely what your driving instructor is saying. Um, which I don't. Uh, I do speak French and I can understand most of what people are saying to me, but there, there could be something that, you know, it's easier to do it in England to get an English driving license. But COVID happened a year ago. Um, so for the last year, I haven't been able to go back and do that um, 
because it's very uncertain whether you can go, uh, whether they're doing driving lessons or driving tests at the minute. Are they? Are they not doing it? They were for a while, then they weren't. So um, as soon as the restrictions have been, apparently they're going to lift the restrictions, all restrictions in the UK, apparently, on the 21st of June. Um, so after that, maybe I can go back and do a week-long intensive course. Um, and yeah, I can do that. So another question, how's the fitness going? It's going really well, actually. I've been um, working out with my friend Florian for about um, a month now um, because I got really out of shape last year. Um, and yeah, it's going really well. I'm getting muscles now, look at that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's going well. I've still got a couple more months of intensive work to do. Um, and um, apparently I need to lose four kilos of fat. That's what I was told the other day. So um, give it time and uh, I'll be back in shape. Because the thing is when, when you're constantly on camera, um, and I don't have a, the greatest self-esteem, to be honest, not the highest self-esteem uh, that I sh you know, you, you think somebody who's on camera a lot would have. And in fact, I'm quite critical of myself when I see myself on camera. So it got to the point where I just didn't want to be seen on camera. I just felt, oh, I just look awful. So it got to the point where I was like, I need to do something. So my friend Florian, he lives like maybe two miles away. Uh, I've known him for a few years. Um, he's training to be a physical education teacher, like a PE teacher. Um, and also he's um, training to be a personal trainer as well. So he's, I'm like his first client. So I'm not paying like the full price you would pay for a personal trainer, like, um, but I, um, I am getting a, like a huge discount, but um, it, yeah, he's, um, he's training me, but he's, he actually said he loves it because it's giving him more motivation to train as well. Um, and it's giving me motivation. So we're both kind of helping each other. So um, yeah. Go to bed, Elias is sleeping already. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's actually a bit worse because I'm allergic to cats too. So I take pills, but in the evenings it gets, it always gets. Yeah, we bit, have um, five cats here and Elias turns up um, from Sweden and says, I'm allergic to cats um, and w we can't kick the cats out. So um, we had a few problems, like he went into his room on the first couple of days and found a cat sleeping in his bed. Um, so you, you have to shut, you know, we took, you know, yeah. make sure he shuts his bedroom door now. He has to, he lives on um, antihistamines. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot we can do about it. We can't kick out Gwen's two beloved cat. I mean, we've got three outdoor cats and they, they were sort of feral cats that are friendly enough to come and be fed, but they're not indoor cats, but we've got two indoor cats and they're Gwen's babies. So um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a compromise, isn't it? Yeah, but it works fine during the days. It's yeah. always in the evenings it gets a bit, they're like the pills get weaker. Yeah, because you, you, you have to take this pill side. before bed because they make you drowsy. So then it, by the time it's almost bedtime, you are you have to, Yeah, that's have, time for the next pill. I've already taken So this today. time of night, his eyes go a bit red, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you make an episode about the Chateau Pets, Beatrix Potter style? I've, I wanted to do like some sort of fly on the wall, like what do the pets get up to when, when nobody's looking, sort of like, you know. Um, oh, um, yeah, that'd be great. Actually, like maybe show a bit more of the animals. People love animals, but they're just, um, they're just there like, all the time and you just kind of, you don't think to film them, but um, yeah, we could do, I could do like a pet special and show the, a day in the life of a, a chateau dog. That'd be interesting, or a chateau cat. Um, oh, thank you so much to somebody else's donators. Well, there've been so many donations. If I haven't thanked you, um, I just want to say thank you now because um, that's it. It really helps out. Actually, it's going to help towards the garden scotches because there's so many hidden expenses and things. Um, so anything that people have donated is going to go to that. So thank you so much. Um, wear a face mask and no pills needed. Somebody's saying. I think. I think no. it's not. It's not. It's not. It must. It's not, uh, it's not cat hair, it's like... It's, Some kind of protein. It's apparently it's a protein in cat's skin, yeah. which kind of comes off, of, off as dust and you breathe it in and then you have an allergic reaction to it. So yeah. Stephanie, my friend Stephanie from the Chateau Diaries, if you don't know Stephanie, then um, 
Everyone knows Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, she's also allergic to cats. Um, but she does have a cat, but he's an outdoor cat. Like, you do have a lot of outdoor cats in France. It's to, it's a thing here. Um, they, um, as you don't really, I don't, you don't really get that much in the UK. Most cats are like pets. Um, but in France, I've always, ever since we were children, when we would come here, there would always be feral cats that would either live in the barns or whatever, you know, and, and eat mice and things. And um, yeah, she she has a, actually, no, I think her cat was somebody else that sort of just left it there, actually. They dumped it there and left it. So it's a, an outdoor cat, but um, yeah, he's looked after. What's he called? Ruby. Is it Ruby? I think Ruby's actually a boy, to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> Stephanie's allergic to cats and horses, and you're allergic to cats and horses? No, no, not horses. Not that I know of. And I'm allergic to nothing, actually. I don't have any allergies at all, so I'm fine. Um, so let's have a look. Is Manchester United your foot favourite team? Uh, people have asked me before what is my favourite football team, but I've never been into football, to be honest. I'm not, I've never been into sport as a, uh, you know, as a, I've never been passionate about sport, um, like, some people love skiing or, or I don't know, like, what bicycle, what do people do? What sports do people do? Football and rugby and all of that kind of stuff. I just never had any interest in it, to be honest. I think it's, it's, I think also a lot of that stuff is, is to do with your parents. Like, you know, if your father was into this or your father was into that or your mother was into this, like you pick it up as a child. But my family's never been into sport. The only thing my dad liked was boxing. Um, and I've never been into that either, so. Um, not really into football, but if somebody says, what's your favourite team? I would have to say Manchester United, just for my friend Mim, um, because she'd kill me otherwise. So yeah, Man United, definitely all the way. Actually, I used to, I used to cut the hair of somebody who was a Manchester United footballer a long time ago. What's his name? F Phil Neville. Does anyone know Phil Neville? Anyone heard of him? I don't think he plays anymore. Last, last thing I heard, he was the uh, captain of Everton or something. But I used to cut his hair and his wife's hair. Um, but um, yeah, no, not really been into football. So sorry to disappoint you. Um, decorate the chapel for Easter. Actually, I'll tell you what we do use the chapel for. We use it as a, like a, for floristry sometimes um, because it's a, a nice outdoor space with a tiled floor and it's quite cool in there in the summer. So like my mum does a lot of flower arranging. Um, she used to for, for when we have weddings and, and sometimes just to put bouquets and stuff around the chateau. My um, mum my always uses it as a floristry studio. She makes her bouquets on the altar and things like that. Um, have you named the chickens yet? <laughs> we did, but we couldn't, we couldn't tell which one was which, so we just named them all Karen. Um, <laughs> so they're all called Karen now. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty much like Stephanie's calls her, was it, she called all the peacocks Ian. Was it the Ians or something? So we've got the Karens. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, let's have a look. Cheekbones on point. I don't know what's happened. Like I've lost a bit of weight and that I've got this like the corpse face has come back. I used to have it when I was uh, <laughs> dinner. And I, if people take photos of me, like they say, oh, are you sucking in your cheeks? But no, it's, it's I've always had that. Um, but it disappears if I put a bit of weight on. So it's going to come back. Um, with Karen, some people are all laughing about the Karens, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Karen's laid an egg. Oh, Karen's laid an egg. Yeah, yeah. another Karen's laid an egg. Yeah. Um, um, I name my chickens uh, on my game Peggy, Egitha, Egbert, and Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, they can be all ca uh, Karen. Yeah. Well, we just call them all Karen. It's easy. Isn't yeah, it? there's twelve of them. There's twelve so there's of them, and they all look few, the same. Yeah. Except there's one chicken. There was one chicken that I felt sorry for. Um, and when when I went to pick up the chickens uh, with you and my dad, um, they were in this pen at the back of a barn. Um, uh, with uh, all the other chickens were at the front pen, but the young ones were at the back separate because obviously they're the ones that were being sold. Um, and all the other chickens were obviously just on the ground in there. Um, and this one chicken, uh, all, like all of its feathers had been plucked out of its neck. It was like a half bald, like, and um, it looked a bit stressed. And, it, and it, as soon as it heard us arrive, it jumped up onto the, um, the chicken wire um, at the top and clung on. And it was like trying to see who was there. Um, so I, um, you know, 
um, I took that chicken. I, you know, when I was picking all of the chickens, I picked all the nice, healthy looking ones. And I just felt sorry for that one at the end. Um, and yeah, I took it. And it's, and it's weird because when we first got the chickens, we had to keep them in their pen, you know, their coop overnight for, um, so, so that they knew where their home was. So obviously when they go out into the garden, they know where to go back to at night. So this one chicken, what the next day when we opened the pen, all the chickens, they were too scared to come out. They just stayed in there. But this one chicken, the one with all the feathers missing, the, the crazy one, that was off. It went all around the garden by itself. Yeah. It was quite happy alone. <laughs> Um, that, was a, that was a special chicken, that one. I think it really wanted freedom and it made sure it was noticed, so it worked. Karen the Explorer. Yeah, no, they're all called Karen except that one. I, want, I call that one Muriel. That one's oh. called Muriel, yeah. I named it Muriel. Um, uh, I think you need to do mugs and teacups with your designs. I would like to do that, but I don't like the... Um, what's it called? Um, that sort of sublimation printing that you just have on mugs. Um, I don't really, like, if I could bring out a range of teacups or mugs that were, were, that were like, um, that were underglazed printed, not printed, um, underglazed transfer, like the way they do Spode and, and China. If I could bring out some, find someone that could manufacture those, because I know that they'd be really nice quality. Um, but just to have that kind of sublimation printed where it's kind of like you can see it on the surface and it's a bit raised, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be happy with that. So but I tell you what, it'd be really nice one day actually if I could contact Spode and see if they could do a, a one-off. Actually, I think Spode do do custom um, designs um, for clients. I don't know how many you have to order, but they do do customs. So actually maybe it'd be nice to do um, a Spode design. Get it manufactured by Spode. That's just like, that's crazy. That's one off. But you never know. These things do happen. Crazier things have happened. So let's have a look. 97 minutes. So we've got three more minutes. Let's try and get some questions in quick. Uh, Karen is another name for a difficult and controversial woman that you can see on YouTube. Ah, I heard about this. Like people calling people Karen. Like, oh, she's a Karen. Because she's, yeah. But I didn't really understand what that was. But... It's just a, it's just a, it's just a funny name, isn't it? Yeah, like Karen. Us. Karen, yeah. Yeah. My mum used to have a friend called Karen, things. and she was like um, hilarious when we were kids. Like, um, she would always like, um, she'd always play the wicked aunt, like, and tease us when we were children, and we liked it. It actually kind of developed my sense of humour, which is actually I'm quite thankful for, even though we used to hate her when we were children. Um, she was hilarious, so I like the name Karen actually. Um, and I feel sorry for all these poor women called Karen who've been like, who are not like that. There must be people called Karen who aren't a Karen. Like, so yeah. Um, shout out for all the nice Karens. <laughs> uh, Karen uh, as in out of Africa movie. I don't know that movie. Um, chapel history episode. We don't know much history about the chapel to be honest, apart from who made the stained glass windows. Um, we don't know when it was built or someone said, nah, all Karen's a Karen. <laughs> I don't know. I've been, I know a lady called Karen um, from Chateau Le Perrier. They haven't got a YouTube channel, but she's got an Instagram. She's lovely. She's definitely not a Karen, whatever Karen is. <laughs> Enough about Karens. Like, let's move on because um, we've got uh, one. Oh, OK. It's Billy going to paint the door of the chapel. No, I th probably, but I should paint it, to be honest. But um, we don't know what colour. Um, it does need painting. Although, to be honest, it's oak. Yeah, uh, it and be, it, it doesn't yeah. really need painting. It's not going to look nice. It's going to just be grey and look a bit dry. But, you know, these old, thick oak doors, they don't, they'll just last forever, you know. Um, so it doesn't need painting, but it would, might make it look prettier. Um, but what colour? I don't know. Do you paint it white? Do you paint it a lime colour? I mean, there's a lot of white limestone on the front of it. So maybe, I don't know. Or do you just sand it back to the oak and then you just stain it so it's a lovely brown colour? So who knows? We'll have to see. Yeah, I will put that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Gold uh, panning episode again, please. Yeah, I'd like to go gold panning again, but it's been... Right now it's freezing, like the water in the stream is freezing. Um, and it's running too fast at the minute because obviously we get a lot of rainfall this time of year. The stream is just like full up 
um, it's better to go in the spring when it's, the water slowed down a bit and you know stuff's had time to pile up in in the bends um, and stuff you can sift through. And I haven't got a gold pan actually. It's never did get one. Um, somebody did send us a, a sluice though, like a mini one. So maybe I can try that out. People are having to repeat their questions because um, there are so many questions and I really, I feel so bad because I can't answer all of them because I can't see all of them. So what I'm going to do is I will do another live chat um, really soon. But what I will do is I maybe um, I'll do, I think maybe you can do a poll on YouTube. Um, I haven't never done that before. I don't know how to do it. Um, but maybe I can get people to send their questions in beforehand. I can have them all prepared, a nice list of questions, pick out the like the interesting ones, um, stuff that I haven't really answered um, before, and then do that again because live videos are are really good because you like if you like, I'm still working on the YouTube video at the minute, um, so it's not finished. But to, to I feel then I feel really bad and like that I need to put something out like and there's pressure and I get a bit stressed. So I'll just like that live video is great because you can. You can just set up the camera, the lights, and, and press go live, and, and, and it's easy. You just have to talk. So so hopefully I've answered some questions. I don't feel like I've answered that many questions, um, but um, I'm really pleased that you all joined me tonight. Um, and anyone that's donated, um, I want to say special thank you to you. Um, I want to say thank you to any of the patrons who are watching, because um, you really, really help out. And actually, um, January and February, for, as far as YouTube revenue goes, it's just been non-existent because I think at the minute, advertisers aren't really paying to put their commercials on YouTube videos. And if they are, it's nothing. So it, like, th that's another reason why there's not been much work going on in the Gardens Cottage. So um, thank you to the patrons because you're helping keep this channel going. Um, anyone who's donated, you're also gonna be helping towards the Gardens Cottage. I want to say thank you to anyone who just watches these videos, whether you watch the commercials or not, it doesn't matter. Just by showing an interest and um, and tuning in and um, and maybe even just leaving a comment. That's just that's um, I'm so grateful for for anyone who um, enjoys what we do and um, and gets some enjoyment out of it in their own way. Um, just want to say thank you so much and have a lovely night. And I will see you for a new YouTube video hopefully in a couple of days. So good night, everyone, and I will see you soon. So how do I make this go? All right, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. Um, oh, here we go. Are you sure you want to end, stop streaming? Yes, there we yes. go, end. Go good night, to sleep. everyone. <laughs>